all right guys welcome to another beer review and uh, today we're going over to the Lake District and I've just realized that my makeshift stand is not correct and is just about to fall over so that wouldn't have been good and this is take two because I am sure I heard footsteps in the attic can you wear that either something's outside in the drain or we have got mice upstairs to cut a long story short i'm getting this review done as quickly as fucking possible and then i am going downstairs and just uh, shutting myself away for a bit <clears throat> but i'm going to be downstairs anyway because i've just received a big box of beer from beers of europe and uh, i wanted something to to drink along with the unboxing because unboxings are still pointless as fuck but entertaining to do but uh, yeah anyway so we're going back over to the lake district with this one i picked this beer up from booths and it just stood out to me um, because i love my smoky beers and porters are a star that i've started to appreciate a lot more over the past year or so and it just sounded really nice and i love the simplicity of the label artwork but yeah this is courtesy of Hesket Newmarket Brewery, established in 1988. And this is part of the Blencatra series, or Blencatra series. And it's the Smoked Porter, clocking in at 5.4%. Beautiful, beautiful artwork. <clears throat> so I'll read you the quick spiel and then go over the ingredients. So we are a cooperatively owned microbrewery based in the Lake District, established in 1988. The Blencafra range embraces modern craft brewing styles and techniques, reflecting our continuing passion for great beer. We have created a range that we believe pays tribute to some of the best beers brewed around the world. We love our new beers and hope that you do too. But uh, yeah, really nice and simple. So the malts are pale ale, beach smoked malt, crystal chocolate roasted rye, and then the hops are Progress, Admiral and Chinook. So yeah, fantastic sounding stuff. Currently recording this at about, that's just gone lunchtime, so I think it's justified that I can have a beer. Even though I'm gonna be, I can smell from here. Even though I'm gonna be um, reviewing Beer Review 750 tonight as well. I'm gonna give you a sneak peek, because it'll probably be already been up, uh, published. But uh, yeah, gonna be tucking into the Barrel Aged Shattered Dream from Siren which I was holding off on till Christmas, but um, I've still got a ways yet to collect a nice surplus of beers to open on Christmas. But uh, why am I talking about Christmas? We've only just got over an absolutely horrendously warm summer. So um, yeah, autumn seems to be here, which is thank you to whatever supernatural force may or may not exist for allowing this to happen because quite frankly i hate summer i hate it with a passion i spent four years in germany where when it's hot it's hot and when it's cold it's cold and then to come back to the uk no it's my crystalia sort of impressions here uh, it's it's become a thing now i've become obsessed with crystalia i think he's just he's just genuinely funny it doesn't matter if it's stand-up interview or podcast whatever and um I'm sad to worry now, what if that's like a trapped bird in our guttering, because that'd be really horrible. I don't like the idea of a, an animal dying in our premises. It's an odd worry to keep you up at night, I suppose. But, um, yeah, what the hell was I talking about? I can't remember. Um, do, 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 do. Went into crystalline mode, for whatever reason. I talked about the Christmas beers. I think I already said my thoughts on porters. I can't remember, so I'm just going to screen wipe. I'm not going to edit it that in, so why did you say screen, screen wipe? Can't even talk properly today. But, um, yeah. Hate summer. That's what I was talking about. I hate summer. And uh, what is going on? So, I'm just thankful that it's still a little bit too warm for my tastes, even though it's overcast and raining. So, I look forward to being able to wear a coat, jumper, cardigan, scarf. Oh, it's so nice to and be able to wear browns and neutral colours. It's going to be 
fantastic. And uh, yeah, I've got a surplus of... Should we just get on with the beer review, Peter? That would be fantastic. So anyway, beer in a glass then. This is why you subscribe to me. I know it. I know it is. And there we go. I'll just do a plop it all in. YOLO. Do people still say YOLO? Do people legitimately say YOLO? Or is that always like an ironic meme sort of thing? I don't know. But I'm talking out my arse once again. But um, yeah. So yeah, the Lake District. Uh, obviously places like Hawkshead and uh, there are other craft breweries. And you've got like the likes of Jennings there as well. Beautiful part of the the world in general, but beautiful part in England as well. But yeah, I, I love any time I get to go to the Lake District. It's just, it's just wonderful. And uh, now I've got a new brewery, even though they're not new. They've been going since yeah, the late 80s. But I never knew of these guys before today. And um, yeah, so I'll be on the lookout next time I am in the Lake District. Uh, because I just love that part of England. It's just, it's one of my few genuinely happy places. Uh, the other one being Manchester, of course, and then uh, Regensburg in Germany. and Yeah, it's nice to have those places that you don't go to too often because the, the sheen would probably dull. But yeah, when I do go to place those specific places and other places that I can't think of on the top of my head, I like to make the most of it. So um, yeah, so basically if there's good beer, then it's probably going to be a damn good time. Anyway. Beer in a glass then, and that to me is black as night. It was pouring not too thick, but you wouldn't expect that for a porter of this ABV. It's not an imperial porter by any stretch. But uh, yeah, it looks absolutely lovely, doesn't it? It's like a nice black coffee. Uh, beer poured with, well, the head dissipated quickly, but you can just see a ring of sort of slightly off-white head. Looks fantastic in this, uh, it's not a tulip glass, is it? It's a snifter glass. See, I'm such an expert, I can't remember what different types of glasses are called. Not that it really matters. You drink whatever beer you want in whatever glassware you want. You might get a bit more of an aroma by having that specific beer in that glass. Who cares? Is it good for you? Don't let anybody judge you and tell you what to do. It's beer. It's an alcoholic beverage. Let's just rein it in, people. We've politicised it way too much. Let's just enjoy beers and uh, make horrific beer reviews like this one. Anyway, the beer looks terrific, so let's see what we get on the nose. It's got that lovely sort of sweet smokiness there. It's got that, it's almost like a, as if, I'm not sure if this is a thing, but like a honey glazed beef almost. But yeah, lovely woody tannins in there. A little bit of a subtle, slightly sweet coffee aroma. A little bit of like molasses, chocolate covered caramel. Did I say that right? I thought I was going to say caramel covered chocolate. Could you imagine how horrible that would be? <laughs> oh dear. I could not sleep for about an hour last night because of a sentence that I said in my head that would be like perfect for porn but i'm not going to repeat it on here and i was just like in, i was crying laughing with it and it's just silly things in the way sometimes sentences are structured sometimes can just be genuinely hilarious but anyway this beer i think this is probably going to be the worst beer review that i've ever done it smells lovely though it's so rich and inviting Anyway, I'm so looking forward to giving this taste, so hopefully you'll stick around and join me while I do drink it. Cheers. I was a little bit worried then, because that first mouthful, I was like, where's, where's the smoke? Where's this like smoky character? It builds. It builds on the back end. Crystal here coming out again. I'm actually looking at that beer now, and from the top, it's a really dark ruby red. It probably has looked like that on camera, but in this lighting, and you look at it from the side, it's dark. But when you look at the top, it's like a like a really dark multi cola look to it. But um, the taste is just 
yeah, that smoky woodiness comes out so much on the back end. Not to the point where it leaves you with um, an unsatisfying, let me just clean my 10 year old's moustache. But it's not to the point where it's like it gets too overwhelming or out of place. But it builds just enough for me. Now, I, when I when I see a smoky beer, I want it to be a smoky beer. I love that character. I love really like smoky, almost charred barbecue as well. You know, I like it when it's just gone past the point of what a lot of people would accept is, oh, that's done. That's enough. I like when it's just pushed a bit more. That's why I love a lot of the sort of like German smoked beers because it is almost to an extreme. And this just builds up to that point. So there would be people who they really like the initial taste of this, but when it builds up, it's like that crescendo is just a little bit too harsh for me. Could you say anything more poncier than the crescendo of a beer could be too pont? Ah, oh, this I'm, I'm a mess, people. Um, I've kept this quiet, um, but it's real talk now. I'm a mess, as you can clearly see. But um, no, seriously, this is an absolutely lovely beer. You get loads of sort of like steeped fruits in there. A little bit thin obviously for a lower ABV porter but it's still bold at the same time I think this is one of those beers that um, although he's infamous for pointing out how thin a beer actually isn't uh, most of the time but Paul if you're watching this this is one of your beers do you know what I mean um, I think you'd really enjoy that and I've noticed the contrast is messed up because uh, the Sun has come out again joy but um, yeah this is beautiful it's robust, it's complex, it's got a real sense of maturity to it. Each aspect you pick out just balances nicely, but then it gets a little bit smokier on the back end. Lovely amount of sweetness, lovely amount of uh, spiciness, lovely amount of earthiness. A little bit dry in the back end, which again, might not be to everyone's tastes, but to me, <coughs> it's working in the beer's favour. As you can see, nicely carbonated. Lovely burp on this beer, by the way. But, um, yeah, that's absolutely terrific. What a wonderful surprise this one was. And it's a supermarket buy. Uh, granted, I had to go to Booze to pick it up, which, yeah, they've got a really good range, actually. Um, but, yeah, this is absolutely terrific. So, if you love your smoky beers, and if you like your porters, I think you're in for a treat with this one. And if you have tried it, then let me know your thoughts, opinions down below. If you've tried anything else from the brewery, of course, recommendations, always appreciated. And uh, yeah, check out the brewery themselves. I'll put all the social media links down below as well. Uh, if you can find out who the artist is, because you know I like to credit my artists, then I'll put the information down below as well. And yeah, what a lovely surprise from an absolutely lovely part of uh, England. Um, I know this reviews being a little bit all over the pre all over the place and I do apologize if the guys from the brewery are watching this for my uh, expletives but uh, no seriously this is a wonderful little beer and um, yeah for a lower ABV porter it is hitting all the right notes and I might have to pick up another bottle of this uh, maybe one for Paul as well if I remember and um, let it settle a little bit um, I can't see too much changing uh, because, you know, with what it is, but this at Christmas time would be just absolutely wonderful. Or, it is, it is a very specific situation for you guys. It's late autumn, it's thundering, it's lightning, it's raining. You've booked a holiday apartment in the Lake District, right in the heart of Cumbria. Cumbria is the genuine general region, isn't it? Um, let me see. Windermere. You've booked your hotel apartment in Windermere, overlooking the lake and the, the hilly town. And you were going to go out, but, y you know, you're going to stay in. It's nice and warm in the apartment. You sat by the window just admiring the views, watching the people go about the business. This is one of those beers that would really help you cherish one of those moments. And uh, yeah, that's my pretentious uh, situational 
quote of the day uh, for my beer review. So uh, if you agree with that situation, and let me know your thoughts, opinions down below. Um, if again, just hit me up in the comments regarding this beer, no matter what, or this style, any smoked porters you like, recommendations. If any of my friends and pill beer tubers have reviewed this one, their links are down below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for putting up with this absolutely horrendous beer review. But you're a glutton for punishment, and that's why I like you. And uh, yeah, check out the brewery and uh, check out your local supermarkets because you never know what you might find. So uh, that's not going to become a thing now when I'm reviewing supermarket beers, don't worry. It sounds like it could be if I was ever to do a proper series. But um, yeah. Anyway, I've got a big box of German beer to unbox. I've got the rest of this beer to enjoy. And I've got paranoia waiting to set in about what exactly is in my loft. That's not going to be a, a beer review series either, by the way. And welcome to another exciting episode of What's in My Loft. Anyway, I'm not funny at all. I don't know why I try to be. And when you see me in, in person, you definitely know that I'm not funny at all. Anyway, there were children screaming outside my front door. So I'm going to cut this video off now. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Ta-ta for now.